The federal government will soon resume the mass prosecution of Boko Haram suspects in selected military formations in Nigeria. Kogi State Governor Yaya Belu launches 2023 Armed Forces Remembers the Emblem Appeal Fund in Lokoja. A nine-year-old child escapes death from a crocodile attack in Chibitu district of the southern Mozambican province of Gaza. WBO up for grab in King of the Ring Boxing Championship, held in December 28th at the Eco Club, Surulere, Lagos. This is MLC TV News, our original live from the city of Lekoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. I am Morno Balagogo. Thanks for joining us. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, on Monday said the federal government would resume the mass prosecution of Boko Haram suspects being held in selected military formations in Nigeria. It was reported that a similar exercise had been conducted some years ago when such trial was conducted in military facilities in Niger and Borno states. According to him, the president, Muhammad Buhari, has approved funds for the exercise. The AGF, represented by the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Justice, Beatrice Jedi Agba, disclosed this in Abuja during a special court session to mark the new legal year 2022-2023 for the Federal High Court. The Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, Justice John Soho, fought at the National Assembly for amending the Electoral Act without imputes from the judiciary. Justice Soho said it was necessary to place on record the Electoral Amendment Act 2022 was enacted without any consultation with the court. The judge who called for an increase in the number of judges of the Federal High Court said poor funding was a major constraint to the court's effective operation. The representative of the body of senior advocates of Nigeria, Adibuyega Awomolo San, expressed concern that election courses were consuming the court's time to the detriment of the other cases. Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello has commended the heroes past and present of security agents saying they cannot be appreciated well enough due to the enormous services they rendered and still rendering to the nation. Governor Bello made the commendation during the launch of the emblem for the year 2023 Armed Forces Remembrance Day celebration in the state held at the banquet hall of the government house in Lekoja. The governor explained that the ex-servicemen have rendered selfless service to the nation, hence the need to appreciate them annually. Our reporter tells us more. All security agents were represented at the launch of Emblem. The ex-servicemen, Chairman David Salau, commended and appreciated Kogi State Governor Yaya Bello for his continuous support towards them. He confessed Kogi is lucky to have Yaya Bello as governor. Thank you for your generous previous donations to the Nigeria Legion. We are thrilled to have your support through the donation. We are able to accomplish Nigerian Legion House and some other things, such as reaching out to widows. We continue working towards financial strengthening of, Niger of Legion to empower the widows also to solve the sick ex servicemen women problems. You truly make the difference for us and we are extremely grateful. We are not looking back towards our promises to back you on this political dispensation. Since the history of the Kogi State, Kogi State is not having any office. It was the time that he came up that he arranged for us to have an office. So what the governor has done for us, we thank him for that. I appeal to everyone for generous donations to enable the Legion reach out to more widows and our sick members. The state security advisor, Jerry Omodara, who is also a member of Air Servicemen, say members of Nigerians Legion of Air Servicemen need all sector support, both in kind, cash and material things. Some of them are maimed during 
several operations and wars in Liberia, in Syria alone. But they are still useful. We thank God several of them are alive. So when we have those people that are here, that are still serving and are seeing those that have served before, we must continue to celebrate them. Today, several widows and members of the legions are empowered. They are currently organized and many of them are still very active and helping us with emerging security in our local government. Therefore, we pray that Your Excellency will continue to support them and continue to ensure that people in the state contribute to the well-being, welfare of legion in Kogi State. The chairman of this year's emblem launch, Professor Emmanuel Jose Ohize, declared that with people's support, the widows, widowers and orphans will be catered for. Let me call to attention that our effort in this direction has the potential of encouraging and boosting the morale of serving armed officers personnel to commit more resolutely, resolutely to their services to us and the nation in the hope that in the event in their service they have to pay the ultimate price. Those that they serve, that is we who are still living, will not abandon their dependence. I therefore invite you to generously donate to this noble and patriotic cause. Before I conclude, let me acknowledge the doggedness of His Excellency Al Haji Yaya Adola Bello, the Executive Governor of Kogi State, in the fight for peace and security in Kogi State and in Nigeria. I should add this that occasion like this, I had asked our business people, industrialists, and all those things. Uh, they, they really should lend a hand to this kind of a thing. Why do I say that? If peace and the unity of the country that men and women have fought for and have brought us to this today, if they were not there to do it and things have not been settled, could any business be running well? Could any industry be safe and secure to operate? And therefore challenge that our, our plea should reach out to those set of people. Governor Yaya Bello said there is a need to continue to support the families of the fallen heroes, the living as servicemen and service officers, described as service to the country and humanity as immeasurable. No any amount of support that will be given to them that is too much, because no amount is big enough to be able to buy a single life. Let me specifically thank the director of DSS for coming up with a wonderful program that has become an annual ritual here in Kogi State, support for the widows of our fallen heroes. <laughs> Let me urge each and every one of us to come up with such other laudable programs that will support these uh, fallen heroes, retired servicemen, and women. I myself, even long before I become a governor, I don't know how many orphans that I have trained and still training. Majority of them today have graduated. They are army officers because, of course, that is what they found themselves or their fathers doing. They become officers, they have become graduates. They are big men even in their own rights today. I urge every one of us to continue to do as much as we can to support them. Governor Yaya Bello commended the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, saying he has done well. He urged the Nigerian Legion and service officers of various security agents to continue to give the government all needed support at ensuring the state and the country is free from all forms of crimes and criminals in the society. I urge the Nigerian Legionnaires and our servicemen that are currently serving out here in Kogi State to continue to give us all your maximum support. We have been recognized by several organizations, including the last award presented to me by Mr. President as the best governor in security management. That wouldn't have been possible without your contributions and every support you are giving to me here. And I urge you to please 
continue to give us that wonderful support. We have been making our own modest contribution and this will never be an exception. 10 million of last year plus 10 million of this year, 20 million has been handed over to him. Heads of various security agents, government functionaries and wives and husbands of the fallen heroes, among others, we are present at the event. The highlight of the event was the decoration of governor, deputy governor, and top government officials, security heads. After the MLAND launch is the lay writ at the state's cenotaph on the 15th January 2023. Fit Abdugafar reporting for MSC TV. The Lagos State House of Assembly on Monday passed a total of 1.7 trillion naira as the state budget for 2023. A breakdown of the approved budget size showed that recurrent expenditure was 748 million and capital expenditure was 1 billion for the year ending on December 31st, 2023. The Speaker of the House, Mudashiro Obasa, who presided over the plenary, said the passion with which the lawmakers processed the bill for passage showed their love for the progress of the state. He also expressed hope that residents of the state would show their satisfaction with the lawmakers and the All Progressive Congress by voting for candidates of the party in Lagos and at the center during the forthcoming elections. In the breakdown for the sectorial allocations, over 3 billion was approved as the new overhead cost of the Office of Civic Engagement for Drug Abuse, Advocacy and 802 million was approved as the new capital expenditure of the Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget while 1 billion 200 million was approved as the new overhead cost social intervention and humanitarian program in the same ministry. It had earlier been reported that Governor Babajide Sanwulu in October presented 1.69 trillion budget tagged budget of continuity to the House. Ahead of a full automation of admission and administrative processes, the Joint Admissions Matriculation Board JAM has commenced training of all the heads and administrative staff of tertiary institutions for seamless implementation of the policy. The new policy is expected to begin from January 2023 following the introduction of the interactive e brochure and e syllabus system IVAS by the board. The train which held at the six geopolitical zones of the country simultaneously had most of the vice chancellors, provosts, rectors and other administrative staff of tertiary institutions in attendance. The board decided to go into full automation of its processes after reviewing bottlenecks associated with communicating or interfacing with various institutions regarding admission processes. Registrar of JAM, Professor Isaac Oloyede, on Thursday declared the North Central Zone workshop opened through a virtual conference at the College of Education, Federal Capital Territory, Zuba, Abuja. He noted that from January, the board would also re stop receiving any physical letter from any institution or agency except through its interactive e brochure and e syllabus system, IVAS. Oloyede, while announcing the take-off of the policy earlier, had explained that the automation of curriculum, accreditation and general administration matters amongst JAM, regulatory agencies and institutions will provide personalized services to the institutions and agencies as only JAM and the institution will be able to see any communication on the platform. And now two stories in politics. Ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission on Monday accused some politicians of buying up permanent voters' cards and financially inducing voters to harvest their voter identification numbers. The commission also said that two persons have been recently convicted for illegal possession of PVCs in Sokoto and Kano states. The acting chairman of INEC and national commissioner overseeing the FCT, Nasaroa, Kaduna and Plato states, Mohamed Haruna raised the alarm in Abuja on Monday during the launch of the Your Vote Matters project by an election observer group.
by an election observer group, NESAction. The project was supported by the International Foundation for Electoral System, the United States Agency for International Development, and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. It aims to assist INEC in increasing the number of PVC collected ahead of the 2023 general elections, as well as the voters mobilized on election day. The INEC National Commissioner also warned that electorates to desist from compromising the ownership of their PVCs. The executive director of NESAction, Eniola Cole, explained that the project scheduled for implementation in the FCT, Nasarawa and Plato states, would provide logistics and give incentives to communities with low PVC collection rates. She commended INEC for gains made in the electoral process through technology and other reforms. Cole implored the general public to take advantage of the time frame set by INEC for PVC collection at the Commission's LGA offices nationwide from December 12th to January 5th, 2023, including Saturdays and Sundays. And now to stories in crime, the National Agency for D Food and Drug Administration and Control has arrested one Michael Oweque, an importer of counterfeit Super Delicia cooking margarine. Speaking on Monday at the NACDAC office in Lagos, the agency's acting director general, Monica Emujese, added that a distributor of the banned potassium bromate tablet, Joseph Rapolchuku, was arrested on the 5th of December. Emu Jezai warned Nigerians to be wary of the injurious products. She stated that 115 cartons of potassium bromate tablets with a street value of 28 million were found on Rapulchuku when NAVDAC offices raided a warehouse in the Akpongon area of Lagos Island. Emu Jezai revealed that 46-year-old Erekwe Uwirikwe of 12 Boundary Street, Aba Abia State, imported 400 cartons of the counterfeit Super Delicia cooking margarine from Dubai and cleared it on one port, Port Harcourt. She added, also discovered in Rapul Chuku's warehouse, was a counterfeit EDC bread improver packed in sachets with a fake NAFDAQ registration number of 014242, valued at 300,000 naira. But I'll go on a short break. We'll be right back. Please do stay with us. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas, and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Glad to have you back with us. And now to stories on the foreign scene. Parts of Ghana's capital, Accra, experienced two earth tremors on Monday morning at around 11 local time. The Android earthquake alert system had indicated the seismic movement reached the magnitude 4, which makes it one of the strongest tremors ever experienced in Ghana. But quakes of this scale usually only cause light, if any, damage. A team of experts has been sent to the affected neighborhoods, mostly in the west of Accra, to assess the situation. There have been no reports of destruction of property or injuries because of the incident. The last time an earth tremor occurred in the capital was in June 2020. A nine-year-old child has escaped death from a crocodile attack in Chibitu district of the southern Mozambican province of Gaza. The girl was swimming in the Limpopo River when the incident happened. She told local media that when she realized that she was under attack, she tried to scratch the nose of the reptile, which before letting go caused serious injuries to one of her legs. She was immediately taken to a local hospital where she was admitted. Mata Moyne, a director at the hospital, said the girl was in good health. Dr. Moyne said she was the second admission to the hospital this year from a crocodile attack. 
Crocodile attacks are common in Mozambique's major rivers and their tributaries. South Africa's parliament is expected to hold a special sitting on Tuesday to debate a report by the panel of legal experts which found that President Cyril Ramaphosa may have broken his oath of office. This is in connection with the Fala Fala farm scandal hanging over the president in which Mr. Ramaphosa has been accused of a cover-up following the theft of foreign currency at his private game farm back in 2020. President Ramaphosa's fate will be in the hands of MPs as they vote on whether he should be impeached. Evidence of potential misconduct after allegations that he concealed the theft of foreign currency from his game farm has filled calls for him to step down. Ramaphosa has reportedly denied any wrongdoing. The governing ANC party has instructed its 230 lawmakers, including those known to be against the president, to reject the report because its findings have been challenged in the court. But some could break ranks and side with opposition parties for impeachment proceedings to get on the way. If Ramaphosa survives the encounter in parliament, he is likely to be elected as ANC president at the party's elective conference, which starts on Friday. And on to stories in sports. Having already sent one South African Bimoth home from the World Cup, Croatia will be aiming to reach back-to-back -back finals when they lack horns with Argentina in Tuesday's semi-final at Lucille Iconic Stadium. The penalty prowess of both sides settled nervy quarter-final contest as Zlatok Dalek's men dumped Brazil out on spot kicks a few hours before La Albulcest beat the Netherlands from 12 yards. The second edition of the Boxing Championship, King of the Rings, holds December 20th at the Eco Club Surulere Lagos after a four-year hiatus, organizers of the event have said. The maiden king of the ring championship was last December 2018 at the Landmark Event Center in Lekki, Lagos, with three titles, bouts, and since then, monarch events and promotions had held several other big and small boxing events. Ten bouts have been lined up for the fight night with the vacant World Boxing Organization Africa Super Flyweight title at stake between England-based Pakistani Tasif Khan and Ghana's Gabriel Larrier, the headliner. For the on the cards, Nigeria's UK-based super middleweight Ezra Arangyeka faces off against Frank Dodzi of Ghana, while in light heavyweight Ghanaians Victor Beneth and Joseph Tete square off. In the super lightweight clash, Temizan Bamulda of Kazakhstan clashes with Nigeria's Waliu Arogundade, while unbeaten youth Olympic silver medalist Ajijat Badamosi 600 squares off against Taye Gajo in the female bantamweight contest. Anthony Joshua has split with coach Robert Garcia as promoter Eddie Hen confirmed the Brit is in the U.S. building a new team. The two-time heavyweight world champion ended his relationship with the long-term trainer Rob McCracken following his first defeat at the hands of Alexander Osk last year and brought in Garcia. He then tried to get revenge over Rizek in August and went with a game plan formulated by Garcia but ultimately came short in the rematch, losing in Saudi Arabia their split decision. Rumors of a split sparked after Garcia was mistranslated as criticizing Joshua in Spanish interview. However, Joshua's promoter, Matchroom Chief Hearn, confirmed the heavyweight is in the U.S. putting a new team together. Joshua is expected to make a return to the ring next year. For entertainment, let's now join Matthias Ayodeji. On our 
Entertainment News. Kurt Adeleke, the wife of singer Shino Adeleke, aka Shino Rambo, has revealed that their one-year marriage is over. Stating her reasons, she accused her estranged husband and his sister Folashade of domestic violence via Easter story. She shared videos, chats, and pictures to back her claim, adding that the marriage is over because she refused to tolerate any form of abuse. According to Sahara reporters, Kurt posted a video of a damaged door, accusing the siblings of being responsible for the door and injury on her wrist. She revealed intimate details about her relationship with her estranged husband in a series of posts, narrating how her husband refused to help her with the house chores even after her surgery, claiming that Adeleke's wealth is a facade. Court also called out her husband, the son of the Oshun State Governor, Ademola Adeleke, and asked him to pay back the money he owed her. She ended her posting by saying affirmative that the marriage is over. Court promised to post more evidence to back up her claims. Singer and Shino's cousin B Red has reacted to the controversial issue with a post on his Instagram story. The singer wrote that he cannot understand how a person can be angry simply because another person is rich and wealthy. Shino and Kurt tied the knot at a low key ceremony in October 2021. They have one child together. Still on our entertainment news from Africa, Zinoliski has revealed via his Instagram account that he will be releasing a new single on Friday. The post shows Zinoliski in a studio singing along to a pop record titled Persona. The single carries a catchy melody and fans will be delighted to know that it's not a piano, which appears to be Zinoliski's preferred genre. The fast rising act has become one of Afrobeat's most exciting talents since he achieved mainstream success with the release of his debut EP. In 2022, he has been featured by Tiwa Savage, Ira Star, and Benson on a piano singles on which he left his imprint. His upcoming single, Persona, appears to be an evolution from Mama Piano into a refreshing sound that will propel his career to the next level. And that is all on Entertainment News today. My name is Matthias IDG Peter, reporting for MLC TV. Thank you, Matthias, for that update. And that is the size of our package today. Do join us tomorrow at the same hour to watch our news as we bring you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malachite TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter at MLCTV1. For your event coverage, information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join us on Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs. It's Malachite TV, reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Mono Balagbubu. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together.